As you read about a lot of famous psychological studies in this course, hopefully you're a little bit uh, concerned and surprised that these things actually happened. That's because many of these famous studies were conducted before we had the ethical guidelines that we have today. Today, not just anyone can run out and willy-nilly conduct psychological research. You have to create a proposal, and then depending on where you're working, you have to get that proposal reviewed by an IRB, which stands for Institutional Review Board. This is a group of people that will look at your study, look at what you plan to do, and then review how ethical it is. And there's several guidelines that most IRBs will take into account, and you'll want to be very familiar with these. A lot of them are common sense, but don't just rely on that because you'll want to know specific terms and specific guidelines. But if you put the rights and well-being of all participants over anything else, kind of at the forefront of your thoughts, then the rest of them kind of fall into place. Whenever you're conducting a study, what is the most important is whether or not the participants in your study will be okay. Um, if you're going to learn something that gives us a lot of value to science, that's wonderful. But what's more important is the rights and the well-being of all the participants. Uh, you also have to get informed consent from anyone that volunteers to be in your study. And so they will read about it. You will be very honest with them about what the intent is and also what the specific risks are if there are any. You want to minimize risks to your participants, but if there are some, you have to be very upfront with them so they can make an informed decision about whether or not they want to participate. Now, we can't always just tell people what we want to study because sometimes that can kind of tip our hand and that can ruin the results of an experiment. So sometimes psychologists do use deception. We'll tell you that we're studying this, but what we're really doing is studying something else. Uh, sometimes that's a really helpful way for us to get information. But we have to justify that deception. We can't just lie because it's fun and, oh, wouldn't it be cool to, to tell people this and then really study this? We have to only use deception when there's no other way to get that information and when being very forthcoming would actually ruin the results. But again, even then, the rights and well-being of everyone uh, comes first. Participants can withdraw from a study at any time as well, even if they have signed their name to a contract saying, I promise to participate for the rest of my life, doesn't matter, um, if, even if they've been paid or given compensation. The nature of psychological research means they may not know how they'll respond until they're actually in the situation. So they are free to get up and leave whenever they want. That might frustrate you as a researcher, but we have to make sure participants feel comfortable to do that. We also have to debrief them, which means we have to tell them what the purpose of the experiment is. Even if it's not in very specific terms, we do have to tell them what's going on. We have to tell them when they can expect the results, and then we also have to give them a chance to come back and say, all right, you've got your data. What was this really about? What were you really doing? Um, it's really important to provide that opportunity. Not everybody will care, but you at least have to give them the chance to come back and get that information. You also have to ensure that that data remains confidential. That's really important, especially if you're researching uh, very sensitive topics. And then you also have to keep uh, track of your experiment, of your research, and you have to see if it is causing harm. And if it is, then you've got to go back to the drawing board. You've got to remove the part that's harmful and find another way to address it. So again, if you're looking out for people, or animals, I should say. Uh, there's not a lot of psychological research done on animals, at least not as much as you might think. But um, when we say participants, we mean both human and animals. So the rights and well-beings of all participants should override anything else. Um, I'll tell you that ethics sounds easy, but it really isn't. Uh, even in IRBs, you'll have some people that think this is okay and some people that don't. But the idea is they have a reasoned intellectual discussion, and again, they minimize risk and uh, do what they can so the study gets underway. So make sure you work those practice questions and you are very familiar with the ethical guidelines for psychological research.